Hi, it's Keith Townsend from the CTOadvisor.com talking about a little serverless computing. So outside of the ridiculous marketing term of serverless computing, let's dig into what serverless computing actually is. Off the bat, you can't have computing in the modern day without computers, without servers. So therefore, there are servers in serverless computing. But from a high level, it's a shift in application development versus a shift specifically in operations. Today, when we build applications, we usually build applications with the VM as a central piece of the application. We build multiple VMs, put multiple parts of our application within that VM ecosystem and then we start to monitor those VMs. So if a VM fails, our application or a layer of our application fails. So that's a server-centric view of computing. Even with microservices and then we start to break down these services into smaller either VMs or containers, we can go with a container approach. Even when we bring it down into smaller containers or microservices, when these microservices infrastructures fail, our application fails. Serverless computing looks to eliminate that single point of failure where we're providing, I think Microsoft had the best approach pre-2012 with their original implementation of what they call, or what we call PaaS, platform as a service where you can build applications looking to use specific platforms within a cloud service provider. In the early days, this was specifically databases, load balancers, load balancers application engines. You could use these things to build applications. Well, we'll take in that ideal one step further. With services, let's take AWS's Lambda service for an example. Lambda is an event-driven application that, or a service that can leverage events in, let's say, Amazon's S3. I was at a meetup the other day and one of the examples that was given was a video application that would dump video files from an end user's computer onto an S3 object store. S3 would then create an event to the Lambda service which code could then be executed based on that event. So let's say that the video file hit S3, a Lambda service that's written by the developer, let's say it's a encoding application. That encoding application would launch uh, on against the S3 object store and re-encode the video and then go away. In the case of Lambda, that process has to complete within four and a half, five minutes. Otherwise, it will just die. Why would we want to do that? Well, Lambda is a headless service. There, it's not associated with a single VM. You can say, in the case of Lambda, you can say how much memory you want to use in order to run the process, but you're not going to say how many CPU cores you need or how much storage. You, AWS sizes the behind behind the scenes compute based on how much memory your process is going to leverage. Based on that, AWS will then charge you for every instance or every call to Lambda that you make. So every event to Lambda, let's say that you have 1500 users upload videos all at one time to S3, you'd have 1500 instances of your encoding software or function run at one time once those 1500 instances ended, you'd be done and you'd be charged for those 1500 instances. An uh, interesting thing with S3, or I mean, I'm sorry, the in interesting thing with Lambda, as a service today, AWS, the free tier, which doesn't expire, 
will get you up to 1 million events. So you can build a pretty robust application. Of course, there's always considerations. One, with the example of Lambda, you're tied into S3 and other AWS specific event-driven applications. Uh, the other disadvantage or design challenge that you have to consider is scale. While Lambda is extremely scalable in itself, you can have thousands or even hundreds of thousands functions running at the same time or microservices, your underlying infrastructure still has to support that. So if you have a Dynamo DB, a MySQL DB, back ending this process, or you have some metadata that you're collecting, that subsystem has to be capable of handling that load. In the case of AWS, they do give you the capability to scale and size the number of instances that you run of one specific type of Lambda. Serverless computing in a nutshell, there's still servers there, but it's most definitely a powerful abstraction from the virtual machine. Talk to you guys. Visit us at thectoadvisor.com. Listen, subscribe to the podcast weekly at iTunes or using your favorite podcatcher. Talk to you guys.